So if you were like me and your Claran pulls didn't exactly go as planned, then I'm here to offer you some alternatives that you might want to consider before you proceed with building our new champion duelist. First off, let's go over the basics of her talent, namely how she plays around her bono flag mechanic, which I'm just gonna refer to that as ball or ball for the rest of the video so I don't get tired of it. Her elemental skill, when used, makes her normal attacks become electro pew pew, and its properties plays off that ball value that she currently has based off her max HP. If she has a ball value that is less than 100% of her max HP, basically if her whole HP bar isn't fully red, each of her hit shots will give her 35% ball value until it reaches the 50% HP mark. I don't know why it restricts itself until that point only. For my life, I can't find anything in the talent section that showed me what restricted to that point. So if anyone does know, do feel free to let me know. Now there's two ways to go about using her when she has the pew pew infusion. You can just spam shot until you run the 7.5 seconds duration out, or you can instead press E again and do this cool lunging attack thingy. The difference is, the lunging attack thing clears off your ball value through the healing that it provides, but it also increases its damage off of said ball value. So the best mix you can do is to gain your ball value through normal attacking, use the lunge thing, and then rinse and repeat until the duration wears off. The lunging attack also has increased damage, healing, and AoE if you used it when you have a ball value that's greater or equal to 100% of her max HP. Now, how do you get to that 100% ball value you might ask? Well, the best way is to use her burst. Unlike Arlecchino, her burst seems to be the main way for you to get that max ball value because it gives you ball value instead of clearing it, and it actually scales the amount it gives you alongside the level of the skill itself. I've tried multiple times to combo using her burst and then her skill to get to 100% ball value, but I find it to be an inconsistent method at best. The easiest way I find to reach that 100% ball value is to just upgrade your burst talent level to level 7 since it actually gives you over 100% max HP ball absorption right off the bat. But if you have a better way, do let me know as well. So there's actually a use case for you to upgrade her burst alongside the skill and normal attack, at least until it gets to level 7. Just a bit of a suggestion in case you want to have a bit less of a headache when it comes to trying to achieve that optimal ball value. Wait, hold up. Never mind, folks. I figured it out. I'll let in-game me explain it to you. Okay, no, actually, I actually might have figured it out. Okay, let's let it let it heal once. Ready. Boom. Okay, there you go. There you go. I get it now. I get it. I get it. So that's the way. That's the way. That's the way. If you want to get Bond of Life to 100 without having to level up your talent to level 7, you just do that. So basically, you, any healing sources that happens when you're within your uh, infusion state, will turn into Bond of Life Absorption instead. That's sick! That's actually a really good feature. Wow, nice, 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 nice. I like that. Alright, thank you in-game me. Back to scripted me. Right, let's move on from the talents and let's get on to the builds. That's why you're here anyways. I lost twice in her banner, but I did get another one of Al Haytham's signature weapon, which is not a half bad alternative for her. So I decided to just see what I can do with what I have. I immediately narrowed down my weapon choices to the full ER and the Haran. Mist Splitter would also have been a great alternative, but I don't have it. Yet, I do believe that it has the same principles with the Haran build which I will elaborate more later on. Before we get into the builds, I just want to mention that I won't be showcasing any Harmonic Whimsy builds here. As much as I want to say that it's because I'm only showcasing alternative builds here, but it's also mainly because I haven't gotten a single usable piece of Harmonic Whimsy. I'm certain that it's probably still the best artifact for her to use, but my luck there has been beyond trash, so I won't be showing any of them in this video. Now, when it comes to each of the alternate builds that I'm about to suggest to you guys, they all play around one thing, which is elemental reactions. A Dendro character is essentially a must-have in her team, if you want to have an easy time getting damage out of Clorand. Any Dendro support will do, but of course, the staple suggestions will be those with AoE application like Nahida or Kale. Right, so let's look at the Foliar build first. Right off the bat, I can tell you that I won't be getting any physical damage on my Claran, because this weapon needs a bit more EM love for a more optimized approach to its playstyle. 
which is why I first used the Wanderer set alongside Thundering Fury. But then, I also tried out a 4-piece Gilded Dream set, and honestly, they're both pretty close looking at least in this domain. Just 2 seconds difference, which is kinda negligible for most content in this game. Of course, Gilded's 4 piece buffs are a bit more reliant on your team comp as well, so if there's anything to consider between these two, it's probably just going to be that. With more elemental mastery, any quicken or aggravate reactions would essentially hit like a truck. The second build, which revolves around the Haran weapon, is the path that I would consider as the safer and more stable path. You can sort of consider this as the jack of all trades way of building Claren, meaning that you'll have decent damage spread across all facets of her DPS options. Her physical damage won't be absolute trash, her pew pew state will still do close to its usual amount of damage, and a more elemental reaction playstyle will still be a great way of playing her, particularly if you use 4 piece Thundering Fury. All that electro reaction buffs will be a great way of still pulling nice damage with them reactions, even on a piss poor elemental mastery. And the fact that any attack on her pew pew state will contribute to proccing that skill cooldown reduction passive makes it the go-to build if you want a more consistent pew pew uptime. Of course, the fact that there's no need to overly build on your EM also means that you can do more traditional DPS builds. The two-piece gladiator and thundering fury option is still a good old safe option, and the increased attack means that 4-piece Gladiator becomes a much more serviceable option compared to the other build. Using Miss Splitter with this build should also achieve a similar result. You just need to tinker around with your artifacts to account for the different weapon substats that they have. Oh, and for those of you who are going, Oh, this guy isn't broke, he has other 5-star options. I'm broke now, okay? I'm broke. I'm fucked. Barely any primos and no good artifacts, okay? Anyways... To account for that, other non 5 star weapons to consider if you don't have those alternatives are also very plentiful. You can use the Alley Flash as a substitute for the Foliar build, while Alliance Roar is a nice enough substitute for the Haran build. A more F2P option would definitely be the Craftable Irons thing which you can use for both builds actually. And if you don't mind using a 3 star option, then you can get the Dark Iron Sword from this street vendor named Chen in Liyue Harbor or from a chest in Chen Yu's Vale Swang Shan Hall, but you need to do a world quest for that one, so get the one from Chen first. When it comes to her team synergies, thankfully her more accommodating ball playstyle makes her much more accessible with your usual cast of support characters. Considering the fact that her pistol shots are considered to be normal attack damage, big sub DPS abilities like Jing Cho, Yelan, and Raiden will all work alongside her infused state, so no need to worry about synergies with those characters. You can still try to use Farina alongside Claren, but that HP drain can sometimes prove to just be way too much of an issue in certain dire cases. Not impossible to use alongside her, but can just lead you to more trouble than what's necessary. Your typical sustain such as Kakomi and Zhongli will still be very solid choices to go alongside her, and a more accessible option such as Yao Yao, and if you don't mind the risk of getting frozen, Barbara are all decently solid options especially with the whole healing to ball conversion thing. I tried using Bennett to see if his healing would give Claran her extra ball, but that doesn't seem to work, probably because of the way his healing limit works. But as per usual, still one of the best buffers you can use if you want to try that overload playstyle or just to buff up her attack. And of course, as I've mentioned earlier but I'm just gonna say it again to be safe, Dendro characters. More quicken, more aggravate, more Dendro electro reactions more wins. And that's about it for this quick video. Hope you guys have found it helpful and hopefully y'all had better luck than I did in this banner. Or if you haven't pulled or are still in the midst of pulling, well then good luck to your endeavors. Leave a like if you want to and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Until the next video, my name is Leafy and I'll see y'all next time. Sayonara!